Welcome back. Today, we'll be looking at a proof of the Brouwer fixed point theorem. So usually when this theorem is covered in topology classes, the proof presented uses some rather advanced uh, tools such as tools from uh, homology theory and so on. However, for today, we'll be looking at a rather simple proof. So to recap the statement of the theorem, it says that let D be a closed unit this in R2, and for any continuous function, there must exist a fixed point of f. So uh, right from the onset, I'm going to say that this video assumes basic analysis in uh, basic knowledge in analysis and topology. If you understand what I mean by closed unit this and what is meant by co continuous function in a topological context, then uh, you have the right prerequisites to fully understand this video. Nonetheless, if you would just like to take a look and appreciate what undergraduate mathematics is about, uh, feel free to keep watching the video as well. This video also assumes that uh, you have seen the previous video on Spurner's Lemma, which is a simple combinatorial lemma that we'll be using in this video. So rather than proving the fixed point theorem for the closed unit this, we are going to prove it for the isosceles right angle triangle uh, indicated here, where the hypotenuse is parallel to the x-axis. We can do this because this triangle is homeomorphic to the closed unit this. And the way we will do it is to prove by contradiction. So we will assume on the contrary that we can find a continuous function from the triangle to itself with no fixed point. Okay, so for the proof, we are going to fix k, uh, an integer that is at least 2, and consider a triangulation of the, the parent triangle into k square smaller triangles using the method shown. So you can generalize this for arbitrary k. This is the diagram for k equals 4. And what we are going to do is we are going to specify how we are going to color the vertices because we need this to apply Spurner's lemma. So to do this, we are going to look at an auxiliary function, g, which is given by uh, g of p equals to f p minus p. So you can imagine this as like a little arrow from the point, uh, drawing from the point to where the point has been displaced to under the function f. So since f is continuous, we, we conclude that g is also con continuous, and by hypothesis that uh, there's, there are no fixed points, g is never equal to the vector 0, 0. Okay. And at each vertex, we are going to color the vertex based on where the arrow points. So if the arrow points with a strictly negative y value, we will color the vertex blue. If the arrow points uh, with non-negative y but strictly negative x, we will color it red. And if the arrow lies in this area, which is uh, non-negative y value and non-negative x value, we will color the vertex green. So in the example here, this vertex will be colored green. So we see that uh, by construction, this uh, end vertex will always be green. This end vertex will always be red. And this end vertex here will always be blue. And at the same time, the vertices on these edges will always point such that it, is equal, uh, it will be colored green or blue. These vertices on this uh, edge will always be colored green or red. Vertices on this edge will always be colored blue or red. So in other words, what we have just shown is that uh, the coloring on the triangulation satisfies the hypothesis of Spurner's lemma. And so we can apply Spurner's lemma to conclude that there exists a rainbow triangle that is an elementary triangle with uh, all three vertices of different colors. So let us call this rainbow triangle C1. Now what we are going to do is we are going to replace this triangulation with a final triangulation where each elementary triangle is further split into k square congruent triangle. So basically repeat the same pattern of the triangulation for uh, each of the elementary triangles. So we get a, another, a final triangulation, repeat the same uh, coloring scheme, and by 
Bernard's lemma again, now we have a smaller elementary triangle that is a rainbow triangle. So we call this C2. So I want to point out at this juncture that it is not necessarily the case that C2 is contained in C1 because maybe in the first case we happen to pick this rainbow triangle but after a final triangulation we, we pick a rainbow triangle that is contained in a different part of the main triangle. So we have a sequence of uh, rainbow triangles. So basically after the final triangulation we repeat uh, with yet another uh, yet final triangulation and so on and this way we obtain a sequence of rainbow triangles that are uh, successively smaller and smaller. So what we do is we consider all the red vertices of these rainbow triangles. So because we are uh, working with infinitely points in a compact subset of R2, we can apply the Bozzano Varishaw's theorem to conclude that there is a convergent subsequence among these red vertices. So uh, for notation, let's say that the red vertices of this subsequence of tr rainbow triangles converge to a point Q. Then we notice that because these sub triangles are getting smaller and smaller, the green vertices of the same subsequence of uh, rainbow triangles converges to the same point Q. At the same time, the blue vertices of this subsequence of triangles converge to the same point Q again. So because G is a continuous function, G of Q, when you apply to all the red vertices, if eventually uh, when G is applied to all the red vertices and we take the limit, we conclude that GQ must lie in the closure of the red region here. And similarly, when we apply G to all the green vertices and take the limit, we realize that G of Q must lie in the green region here. And lastly, again, when we apply G to all the blue vertices here uh, and take the limit, then G, must lie, G of Q must lie in the closure of this blue region. So this means that G of Q can only be the intersection can only lie in the intersection of the closure of these three regions, which is the point zero zero. But we assume that G of Q is never zero zero. So this gives us the required contradiction. So that's all for this video. I think uh, this proof of the Brown Switch Point theorem is quite elegant and much simpler than the use of uh, com complicated tools from uh, more advanced topology. So hope you enjoy it and see you soon.